Hi everybody, this is Tina with Rehash Designs and I have something a little bit different that I'm going to be doing today. Um, I'm kind of redoing my craft room and I'm adding uh, my space that my adjacent um, game room or family room and I'm kind of not wanting um, a lot of uh, plastic containers and things like that. Um, not that those are bad or anything, but I kind of want more decorative things. So I'm going to be using um, some thrifted things that I have, and I'm going to kind of make them over. And I thought I'd bring you guys along. Maybe you would be interested in seeing that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've got some things that I um, purchased, or actually I think I got a present in that. And that's my a box from uh, a Bed and Body Works. And I've had it for a while, and I've used it to tote things around. I've got this little basket caddy. I got that at a garage sale for a couple dollars. I thought that'd be great to haul my tools and things around in. Um, I got this little box. I don't know where I got that from. And this is a little thing I also got at the garage sale. It's really an um, old antique uh, little card file. And then I have this ugly um, kind of tote that I've had in my garage forever. I really can't even tell you where I got it from. Um, I've had it forever and I thought, you know, now's the time. So um, what I'm using um, here is I have some paint that I got, um, some Oops paint from uh, Home Depot and it's their marquee paint, um, basically their top of the line and it has a sealer in it and a stain blocker and I'm using that instead of a uh, stain blocker on this you have to use some sort of stain blocker on um, pieces like this because of bleed through um, and plus it's such a dark color and on the bed and body works I'm going to be moving from project to project um, on this guys because I do one thing let it dry and then I move on to the next Anyway, so on the bed and body um, box, the reason I'm using the sealer is because if you have a dark color that you're going over um, and you're going to use a light color, and I am going to be using a Waverly chalk paint, that's a, a light color, um, a milk jug. And the thing about it is, is that if you use a light color underneath, you have to use a lot less coats. And if you notice on this, it's covering in one one coat just like that. So um, I'm going to do that and let that dry. And in the meantime, while those are drying, I got a bunch of little Christmas presents. I bought a bunch of IOD molds and stamps and transfers. Um, that was my Christmas present. Um, and I am going to go ahead and use some amazing casting resin. Um, if you haven't used it, it's super easy to use. It's, um, 50 parts of, of each one, A and B, and you just mix it and stir it, and then you pour it into the mold, and the IOD molds are really, really easy to use because they have a, this rim around them, and I over pour this, um, quite a bit, um, and it's not a problem. I pull a lot of it off. But if you do do that, you can just um, break it off with your hands or cut it with scissors, um, the other parts. And it, it, it works, you know, just fine um, if you do over pour it. Or even if you under pour it, you just add more to the uh, dried mold, uh, mold, you know, and let it dry and it'll, it'll, you can do that too. So the one thing I have to say on this is you want to make sure that you have an extra mold handy um, just in case you want to um, uh, pour it in it because you may have like over poured even though it tells you on the mold um, how much resin that it takes um, it's you know you can have too much and if you have another um, one handy you can always pour it in there and not waste it And as you can see on that other one, it was already um, starting to dry. So now I'm getting out another mold, and I did cast some in there too. And you'll see I use those. Um, 
<clears throat> I'm moving on to my uh, first coat of chalk paint on this. So all of my other paint is dry. Um, and I know that looks like white, but it's actually a very light gray. And it's very different from the chalk paint that I'm using. But because it's a light paint, it, it is going to allow me a lot less coats of my actual chalk paint. And you can pick up that, um, you know, that oops paint a lot. And you can even get like big giant um, gallons of it. And if you get the one that has the paint and primer already in it, um, it can save you a lot of money on your other paints, guys. That's my tip. Um, even it, like if you're painting furniture or something. Um, those, I just bought the little containers that they had sitting out. So now I'm going to do the same thing to this little caddy. And I'm pretty much um, just going to, I'm going to do the inside and the outside with the chalk paint. Um, and I think it takes like two coats to do all of these even with the primer. So now I'm going to put my molds down and um, I'm kind of just picking up different ones. That's why I did so many. because I don't know which ones I'm going to use for sure. And I'm going to be using this Gorilla um, construction adhesive. I think it says maximum. And I'm going to use that. And when I first do it, I put um, hot glue with it because I wasn't sure how fast it would set up. Um, I've never used it before and it, and it sets within like an hour and within like five minutes, it really gets to the point where it's not really shifting that much. So you don't really need the hot glue. Um, I pretty much only put it on the one piece and I usually only do that because you don't want your, um, stuff moving around if you want to paint it pretty quickly. And if you use, a, you know, just the regular um, uh, quick and thick tight bond or um, if you use um, like uh, any other type of thick glue, it, you know, it takes like um, hours for it to dry. And if you're wanting to get to your project and finish it, this stuff works really, really well. So anyway, I put the hot glue on with it. And the reason I don't like using the hot glue is that you are committed once you put it down. You can't move it around. You can't do anything with it, really. You have to kind of know where you're going to put it. And, um, you know, so I decided I really didn't need to do that after I put the other two little pieces down because it stuck so well so quickly. So on the other piece, I just pretty much um, just use the Gorilla Glue. And um, I also didn't use as much. I put a lot on the, um, the uh, first little pig there. And I had a lot squishing out of the edges. So you don't need as much. So anyway, I'm using that. And like I said, what's great about it is I can move it around for, you know, up to five minutes where... Um, you can't do that if you're using the hot glue. So I would recommend this stuff for whenever you want to do it quickly. Um, it is a little bit more expensive than getting like the quick and thick. Um, so I don't know that I'll use it all the time. But I think for something that if I want to go ahead and, you know, get to my project and, you know, start working with it right away. And that's another thing too. You can always use air dry clay instead of the resin on these molds. But if you want to work on them right away, you can't really do that with the um, air dry clay without, um, you know, possibly damaging the clay um, because it really should dry overnight. But on the resin, you see it's completely dry within 10 minutes. Um, so, you know, this is, if you want to do something quickly, this stuff works really well. So I'm going to put my cow on this little caddy. Um, I'm heating it up with my heat gun because his legs are kind of, I don't know, they're kind of bent a little bit. And probably what happened when I was pulling it out of the mold when it was still soft, I'll bet you I bent the legs a little. And so that's a trick to use with your um, resin. 
you can go ahead and heat it up and it makes it more pliable and it'll conform to your um, surface better. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use the same glue on this and get my little cow glued down. And again, I'm not using nearly as much as I was on the first one because it really doesn't take a whole lot. Now, I have seen people use like super glue um, to do this quickly. But again, I think that's kind of something that you have to commit to right when you put it down. And I'm always like, you know, tweaking it a little bit. And I don't, I don't know. I just don't really want to um, have to commit right when I first put it down. And I really, really like using this stuff. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and make sure his little legs are down. So now I'm going to go ahead and move to my little, uh, little um, box thing that I have. And I cast this really cute little chicken. And um, I don't know what those little things are on the end. There's some sort of, I don't know, uh, foliage or something. But they're cute. So I'm going to put those on here. And this little box I picked up. I don't even remember where. It might have been at like Tuesday morning or something. It was really cheap, like, you know, a couple bucks or something. And it has that um, feed and seed on the top of it. And it's kind of going to go with my theme. Um, it's kind of, it's. I'm not really doing farmhouse. I'm doing like farmhouse kind of cottagey type thing. Um, my upstairs is more, more like a... Um, a Texas country thing and I'm moving a little farmhouse it's gonna still have a combo of that in there but I'm just kind of move it in that direction but anyway um, I'm just gonna glue those on and get it to where I like it and this is why I really have decided um, I'm not gonna use a hot glue with this normally um, I didn't even ever use that Gorilla Glue before I would just use my hot glue and that that's kind of hit or miss if you get it on there because then you can't you know take it off and now I'm working on my little recipe box and I'm trying to decide what I want to put on top of it um, and see that's why I I did all those other molds now here's one that I think will be really cute on top and you know I didn't think all these things out I'm just kind of you know kind of going with the flow whatever feels good I just got all my stuff out uh, that I had my uh, gift certificates and I put in a little cash myself and bought all this stuff for myself and just decided I was going to, you know, have some fun and do some different things. And now I'm just going to take that same milk jug um, paint and I'm going to paint this little, um, to me it looks like a label. And I have used this, I've used it already and I really like it. But um, I went ahead and painted it and... I could have left it white, but to me it looked like too stark, um, especially on that brown antique box. So I went ahead and painted it. So now I'm going to move on to my cow um, on the other uh, box. And it is um, basically, I just have the resin on that one side. I'm going to go ahead and do him and paint him all um, the same color as I did the other ones, the um, milk jug. And make sure I get it all in there good. 
And you can tell just by doing that just how much it it changes the, the whole look of it, I think. Looks pretty cool. Move on to my um, little box that I put the chicken on. And we're going to do the same thing to the chicken. Put our same milk jug paint on it and um, yeah, I go over it pretty good. And that's one thing too on this resin. It takes the paint really, really well. Um, you're really only doing like one coat on there. So, and I'm going to make sure that I go over any part of the box that needs to be done. Now this one was white. Um, so I really kind of have to redo this whole box. I mean, it wasn't the same color and I had didn't prime it or do anything like that. So I have to paint this whole box and then that doesn't take very long because it's already white. So now I'm looking at some, um, IOD transfers that I bought. Um, and, um, this is the seed catalog, I believe. And I'm kind of looking through here. Um, I'm looking for something to put on that little antique uh, recipe card or card file and there's a lot of big um, things in here and I really need something small um, that can fit on the front of it and so um, I do find one little thing in there that I think I can use um, you know the other thing too whenever you look at these you always can think I can cut them apart make them smaller and usually I do so I picked this one and um, I'm not going to use it at the size that it's in. I'm going to be cutting some of the words out of it. And I'm just kind of fussy cutting what I need and where I'm going to need it. Um, and then I kind of move things around and you'll see how I do it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this transfer and I'm going to put it on the front of the box um, on the whole thing. And I want it to go on uh, the top and the bottom part. So I'm holding it together uh, while I'm doing this and I'm putting it on there and I'm doing it kind of cat a corner so it'll fit on there. There's a little tiny piece of a leaf or something that doesn't get on there, but I get most of the rest of it on there. And so then what I'm going to do is just take my transfer stick and you just rub on it. And when you see um, it getting lighter, that's when you know the transfer has, has gone on there. And this goes on pretty quick. It's not, it's not really hard. Um, I just, you pull it up a little bit to kind of make sure you got it on. If it's not on, you go back and just let, don't pull it all off. Don't just rip it all off. Just go start in a corner and go a little bit at a time. And um, it's pretty easy to go on. Um, it depends on the surface that you're doing, but most of the time it goes on pretty easy. So I'm just making sure that I got all the little spots um, and then I'm going to go ahead and pull it off and I cut off the very top part um, of, you know, that I, that I'm not going to fold it over or anything. So now it comes off and I'm holding it still together because remember the box is two separate pieces. And then I'm just taking my craft knife and I'm going to split it right where the um, box comes together. And um, then I'll, it'll be on there good. I think I take a little uh, nail file and kind of sand the top of it. But now I'm just taking the top of the transfer on the slick side. And I'm burnishing my transfer. And what that does is it makes sure that it's on there really, really good. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and figure out what I want to do with the little pieces that I cut apart um, from that. And... Um, there I'm looking at putting that on top and honestly guys you can layer your transfers it's really easy to do um, I've done it several times and it's super easy and now I'm going to take my little label and I decided that it's still a little bit too white for my um, box and I'm going to add just a little bit of wax and technically, guys, you're not supposed to put wax on before you put the transfer on because it won't stick. But I'm actually putting very, very little wax in the middle. I'm mainly putting it on the edges. So um, I'm hoping it's going to stick anyway. But um, you really, really want to be careful about um, putting wax down as a sealer before you um, do your transfers. Now, you can seal it. Um, before you do your, your um, 
transfers, but wax, it just doesn't stick very well. So I'm living very dangerously here. Um, but I honestly, like I really did not put, I put hardly any in the middle. I wiped most of it off. All I was trying to do is give this just a little bit of a vintage patina. So that way I could go ahead and, um, you know, feel like it went with the box better. So now I'm going to just look at my little pieces and decide where I'm going to put them. Um, I actually did not think this all out, but it actually worked out really, really well. Um, as far as the wording and where I put everything, I think, and this is not the order and how it looked on the little thing. So you just have to think out of the box. I mean, you can even cut off words from other transfers and move them over. That's what's so fun about using these. And it gives you such a, a really interesting um, look when you cut them apart and, you know, piece them back together, I think. It's, you know, obviously unique. So anyway, I'm putting these little words on. And they go on the same way as putting the big transfer on. It's a lot easier, you know, because it's a lot smaller. But it's easy to put these transfers on. You just have to make sure that your subsurface is dry. And so that turned out really, really cute. Um, and now I'm going to put the one on the front. And I, this is where I'm going to do it over my other transfer. And it works really, really easy. Um, and it shows up great. So I think it's just, just the right touch to finish this box off. And this is a super, super easy uh, transformation of this little plain box. And I think it makes it look really, really fun and cool and something unique and different. And it was super easy to do and didn't take any time at all. This is all I do to this box other than put the um, that little label casting on there. So I am heating it up with my heat gun because even though it looks flat, it's not. Um, and that will make it a little bit pliable. So when I put it down there, I will know that it's flat. Um, and it'll, it will lay flatter. And I do that on almost all of my resin because most of the time they aren't as flat as you think they are. So um, this way it conforms to the surface and you get a better adhesion to it. And I just use that Gorilla Glue on it too um, because I know it'll stay. So now I'm going back to my um, my uh, little other box that I had. And I what I'm putting in there, and this is called a salt wash. And the thing about it is, is that thickens up your paint a ton. It's supposed to be equal amounts. And here I'm making sure I put one scoop of that, one scoop of paint. And honestly, I don't even know if that's really correct because it really kind of depends on how thick your paint is. And because my paint was so thick, I ended up um, adding more um, paint to it because it was just way, way, way too thick. So, you know, or I guess you could add water to it instead of paint. Um, but I did add uh, more paint to it um, because I really wanted the coverage on here and um, I needed that thickness. I almost always... Um, do the salt wash because when when I'm doing a resin mold, um, because no matter how hard you try, there's always like a little gap um, when you uh, glue your molds down. Not so much when you use um, uh, air dry clay, but when you use the resin, um, there's always a gap. And here I am taking my salt wash and I am going in the, the little gap that you that is always there and I do that because I want the mold to look like it's part of uh, the piece that it's I don't like it to look like it's just been glued on I like it to look like it's been a cart like a carved piece or something and um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that in all the little areas behind there and then I go and I do my entire piece um, to add some of the salt wash to it and I like the texture that it adds um, and it really works uh, great later on you'll see what it does when you vintage things up now I'm taking my little brush 
um, as I'm doing that, I'm using my big brush again, but the little brush you just saw me use, I have one always handy because what I do is I go and I take, I go in there and I get all of the little crevices and cracks and stuff. I get the salt wash out of that because you don't want to use, lose the definition, um, in your, um, mold. So now I'm on the little lamb and I'm doing basically the same thing. Um, I'm going in there and I'm adding the salt wash, not just to the surface of the box, but on the sides and just kind of jamming it in there. And then again, I'll take my other brush and, um, when I'm done and I'll go in and I'll get all the extra salt wash out of, and even the paint can, um, fill in the, um, the molds. You want to make sure you still have your definition and you don't lose any of that. But the cool thing about the salt wash, even if you don't have any molds, is it does um, add this kind of look to your piece. Now, you can make it super, super um, thick and heavy duty, almost like stucco, too. Uh, but I, mine is not that heavy here. But I do make sure I get it all in there. And then I take my little brush and I get any of the pieces that are in there too thick out because you just really don't want that. Um, you know, what's the point in having all that definition in the mold if you're going to wind up with, um, you know, losing all that. So now I'm going to go on to my um, other uh, box and we're going to do the other mold with that. The same thing, same process. Um, and you can kind of see on that pig, even though I heat it and put it down, there's like a little tiny gap piece there. And that's because they don't lay 100% flat and they don't conform to the box and, you know, whatever image you have, um, even if you heat it up. So this way, by using the salt wash, um, it does fill it in. Now I'm going to do my cow that's on my little um, caddy that I have. Um, basically, I do it on all of these pieces. And I, again, I will go over the whole piece with the uh, salt wash. Now I don't do the salt wash on the inside of this box or the other one. Um, actually, I think I did do the salt wash on the inside of the other one, but I didn't do it on this. Um, but you know, I finished the inside and I, I do all that, but I, I really didn't add the salt wash on the inside, but I will add it on the outside and I don't put it on super thick on these pieces. I'm just going to do it to add a little bit of texture. Okay. So now what I'm doing is I've got my other little box and I'm sorry for skipping around guys, but that's how the order that I did it in. Uh, and I am taking some clear wax and this is a uh, Dorland's clear wax. I love it. And I am doing that just to seal it. You need to seal your transfers whenever you do them. Um, just because, um, you know, you don't, it helps them from, um, ever coming off or, you know, like humidity or anything like that later. Um, it doesn't make them, you know, completely waterproof or damage proof, but it does do that. And after I put my wax on, I just rub it uh, off. I let it sit for a minute or two and I just rub it off with a paper towel. So now I'm taking, um, my clear, uh, sealer that I showed you and I'm just going to go ahead and, um, seal my uh, boxes that I've put the uh, last coat of uh, paint and salt wash on. They're all dry now. And that's why I move from piece to piece. I'm working on the next piece while one's drying and then, you know, doing that. So I'm going to go across and I'm going to do uh, this sealer all around. And this sealer, it dries really, really quick. And I, I really like it. Um, I haven't used that many other ones, so I really can't compare, but price wise, it was pretty good and, um, it works really well and it dries well. Um, the thing is you have to put a sealer on all of these because I am going to be putting, um, a dark wax on them to vintage them up. And if I don't do that, then it'll just soak right into the chalk paint. And, um, it, it just becomes really dark, really quick, and you can't really undo it other than like painting it over again. So you really want to have a good sealer on there. 
And plus you need to seal chalk paint because it'll rub off, flake off if you don't. Um, and I'm sealing the inside also. And so I, now later on I go and do some things and I'll tell you later, I should have waited to do the sealer before um, I just did some distressing, but you'll see that later. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the exact same thing to my little caddy that I have. And just go over the whole thing uh, with the sealer. And I do do the inside too. So now I've got my IOD Orchard Designs again. Um, this is some other transfer. And I am looking for something to put on this cute little box. And I find this wonderful little transfer that has a chicken on it. And I thought, oh, that's so appropriate. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on the back of this little... Um, thing and I do have a little bit of problems with this and I think that's because I did it and the sealer was not completely dry it did it did transfer but it, it was a little harder to do and so now I'm going to go ahead and I am going to take um this is just a Waverly uh brown uh wax and I am going to take it and I am going to go ahead and paint the top of my box to kind of stain it I want it to be a little bit darker stain because I want it to look a little bit antiqued. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And it also has the um, feed and seed thing on there. And that makes it more pronounced. And all the little, you know, uh, etching and all that. So, and I'm going to do the inside and the outside with that. Because I wanted it just to be darker. And of course I want it to look finished on the inside. And the in inside of this box has... Um, some like felt in it and the bottom of it and i'm gonna it has like little pieces of glitter in there that i need to get out but i'll do that later so i've tried to be careful not to get paint on the inside and so far i've done okay so anyway i'm just gonna wipe it on and rub it off and get it to the point that i want and this stuff dries super super quick so um that's why on the box itself i put the sealer on it because if i didn't do that then um you would it would just absorb in really quickly and i didn't mind doing that on the top of the box because i did want it to absorb so um now i'm going to take this same dark wax uh this it's just brown uh waverly uh wax and i'm going to just go over it and it looks like i've ruined my piece i know um, the first time I ever did this, I thought I did. Um, I will tell you though, if you do it just on the chalk paint without it sealing, um, you'll have a hard time getting a lot of that, um, off. Um, you don't have the uh, freedom to remove it once it's soaked into that paint and it soaks in really quick. So I go ahead and do that. And honestly, I wipe off probably 80% of it. Um, I probably could use a little less product, I think, but, um, I kind of go, you know, make sure that I get into all the little cracks and crevices and, and then I just take a, a wet baby wipe and I wipe off most of it afterwards. Um, you know, I want it to have a vintage look, but, um, if you don't like that, you mean, you can avoid doing that whole thing. You don't have to do it or you can just do a lot less of it. Um, however you want, but the good thing about using that wax is um, it really does pronounce all of those little, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, of the molds and the casting because all of those little pieces show on there. And then also too, guys, I go directly over my transfer with this wax. It does seal the wax and it, it works just fine. So now I'm going back, and this is the part where I should not have added the sealer before I did this. I decided, and I, and partly it's because I decided to do this later, I decided I wanted to go ahead and distress this back because on this piece I have, um, you know, that dark wood underneath it, and I thought, oh, that'll look really good. Well, I sealed it already with the sealer, and that makes it really hard to sand it back not impossible but a lot harder so now all i'm going to do is i'm going to start adding that same uh, brown wax and i'm 
Got my wipe ready there. <laughs> no, I put that there. Anyway, I'm doing the inside first um, because you have to do a lot more wiping off and messing with the outside. So I thought, well, this way the inside will be dry um, while I'm working on it. Um, so I do the inside and mainly because this little box is kind of be sitting out and I'm going to just have different things in it and I want the inside to look good too. So here I am, I'm doing basically the same thing. I'm covering it with the wax and I'm making sure I get in all the spots and all the places. And, um, I, I really, um, make sure I get in all the little crevices and all, and that's one reason why too, I use a salt wash. What's going to happen is you're going to end up having some of the antiquing go in the sides, not just you know, on the top of the mold. And if you, um, have those gaps there, it'll actually, um, make the gaps more pronounced. So you really, to me, the salt wash really makes a difference when you are using the, um, resin. And I even use it a lot of times when I'm using the, um, the, uh, air dry clay too, but I definitely always use it when I use the, um, resin. So I'm just going to be putting this all on and I know it really looks like a big mess, but it, you know, honestly, it just, it all turns out, it turns out great. It looks like you're just putting on, now I probably could use a lot less product. I think maybe I should consider that and uh, save a little bit of money here. But now all I'm going to do is I'm going to start wiping it all off and, um, you can see it looks a lot different, um, when I get done and now I'm taking, um, another stamp that I got from IOD and oh my gosh, guys, this has become my new favorite stamp for distressing. Um, uh, first I'm going to use this crackle one. It has four different stamps in there. I'm using the crackle one and I'm going over my box and I'm adding this crackle and I'm using my black archival ink. Um, in hindsight, I think I probably should have used gray for this because I think it turned out a little bit too dark. Um, later on, I go in and fix it. Um, what I do is I take a little of my um, same chalk paint, that milk jug, and I dry brush, which is basically taking 80% of your paint off of your brush. And I go over the um, whole piece with that. And it really, really tamps down the, um, black and makes it very faded. And, um, you'll see later I add some other distressing and I think it really, it makes it all, it blended it all in really well. And then I think I took, um, after that and I didn't film all that. It was kind of an after, an afterthought when I got done. Um, but it was like, I decided it was all just a little bit too dark. So now I'm taking that same archival ink black and I am going to put it on the edges. And while it's still a little, uh, wet, I'm taking my, um, my, uh, wipe and I'm smearing it a little. And that is to help distress the edges a little bit more. Um, it'll give it a really, um, good, nice distressed look. And I, I really like how this is turning out. I think it's turning out really, really good. So anyway, um, like I was saying, I do tamp down on the, um, black later by going over the whole piece a little bit. And I also take, um, uh, pull back some of the brown by taking a dry brush to it later. And I did not film that, but I just kind of went over the whole piece. Um, when I got done and I brought bit, just took the distressing down a notch. And then after I did that, I did put some more of the brown wax. Just took a wipe that had the wax on it and went barely over it and it worked fine. So now I'm getting out these wonderful stamps, the crockery stamps from IOD. Yes, that was a Christmas present also. Um, and I'm picking one out to put on my little caddy with the cow. And they have this really cute stamp. Um, and I, right now I'm sanding my, uh, stamps. You're supposed to do that when you get it with 220 grit sandpaper, but
But I found this little cow stamp. And I am going to put this stamp on the other side of my little caddy. Says something about uh, a, a dairy. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on. And I'm not, I'm kidding. I love these stamps. I love, love, love these stamps. Um, I like a lot of their stamps, but boy, I can see so many uses for this. Anyway, so I do that. And you can see right there, I move my stamp a little. And I'm thinking, oh gosh, what am I going to do? But then I think, well, you know what? I'm going to distress it a little bit. So I take my sandpaper and I distress it. And I think it really looks cool. It looks very authentic because if you had something that was old, it would not, it would not have a clear impression anymore. It'd be broken up. And I think, you know, it turned into something um, really good. So now what I'm going to do, guys, is this is my other fun stamp. This comes in the same pack that has the crackle, but this is like um, a chipped paint stamp. So check this out. I This is my new stamp. Look at that. That looks so real and authentic. You could do it with a paintbrush. You, set, you certainly could, but um, the way that this works is just really amazing. And I so I took that all around the edges, um, and I kind of went crazy with it. I went all over it because I thought, well, it wouldn't just be on the edges. It would be anywhere that you've carried this thing around, anywhere it has like the sharp corners in it. Thing. So I'm doing it all over. Now the trick to this is you want to use different parts of the stamp. Um, you don't want to overdo it, which I may have. I don't know. But I was having a really good time with that stamp, let me tell you. So now what I'm going to do is I'm taking my um, stays on ink and I'm going over all the edges with it and um, I'm distressing that also. Um, I'm not wiping as much back on this piece. I'm leaving the black because I think it really looks good with this. Um, I, I really want it on there, but I don't want it to be, you know, um, as, as, uh, light as the other one. So now what I'm doing is I am taking my clear Dorland's wax and I'm mixing it with the Waverly, um, brown wax. Uh, and I'm doing that because I want to distress this piece or vintage it up, antique it up, whatever you call it. But I don't want it as dark as the other piece. I want it to be lighter. So I'm going to take this and use it and it, it'll go on a lot lighter, you'll see. And it wipes off um, a lot easier. Um, I, want to, I want to distress it because I do want to show all the little int intricacies of the... Um, the mold or the casting, but I also want to make sure that um, it's going to turn out lighter just because I want a different look um, on this piece. So uh, you can see it's already a lot lighter. And I do go over the whole piece, the inside, the outside. And also too, if you look at it, you can't really see the salt wash so much, but it picks up some of that um, antiquing wax there and it catches some of it um, whereas if you just did it on a on the flat chalk paint it wouldn't it wouldn't do as much it, the chalk paint will absorb some of it um, but it it does more um, with the uh, salt paint I added on there so I'm just going to go in and as you can see I'm wiping a lot of this off but it is giving it a little bit of a vintage look and um, you may like that better. You may want to do something like that. So if you have a wax um, that's a little bit too strong, um, you can always mix it. And then I always, I usually always do too much. Um, at that point, you know, I have all these little containers that I get um, from the dollar store and I store it. So now what I'm doing um, is I am going to go ahead and work on my other piece again. And I'm going to take that little um, chippy paint stamp because I I just was having so much fun with it and I'm going to do my chippy paint stamp all over it because it I just love how it turned out I love 
how beat up and vintagey it looks. Um, it may be too much for some people, but for me, I just had a blast doing that. So then I decided to work on my little box and I decided it needed black. So I went ahead and did the handle black and I did all of the little flat pieces um, on the sides and um, this kind of went through the whole thing and I go later on and I distress it. But for the most part, I think the black adds a lot to this. So I went ahead and decided I was going to add some black on the top of the other box. I thought it looked really good, but I mixed it with my brown wax a little bit. I'm kind of dipping my brush in it with the black and I'm kind of dry brushing it on there to give it a more distressed look. And I really like that. I think it looks really, really good. Um, I've decided that I already went back and went over that thing with the white, if you notice. So now I've got my last, uh, couple projects going here and this is my crockery stamp um, that I got also and I love 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 this stamp guys um, I'm looking well it has multiple stamps on it but they have so many different really cool stamps in there um, and so I I'm looking for one that'll fit on that uh, basket pretty much all of them will but I've kind of pick out which one I want and I'm going to cut it out of here because that's how I use it. Um, um, it comes with the little backing and you can just stamp with that or you can use a stamping block. I'm kind of looking at some of these other stamps I have, but I was thinking about the crown, but I changed my mind and now I have some, um, drop cloth and yes, it's stained because I actually did use this drop cloth. And I just cut out pieces of it that I'm going to use. Sometimes I use the stain pieces. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and cut this into a size that I want to put on the top of the, um, or on the front of the little basket. And I'm going to go ahead and just cut that up and get it to kind of the size that I want. And then I'm going to fray the sides of it because I want it to look, you know, vintagey, um, like it's been there a while. If it's, if you've had it for a while, it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be, um, you know, perfect. So I went ahead and sanded off my, uh, my, uh, stamp. Um, I, I wasn't sure if I had already done it before. So I went ahead and did that with some 220 grit sandpaper. And now I'm using my, uh, my ink, um, because you've got to have permanent ink on there. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up my uh, stamp and put a lot of ink on it. This is my archival ink. It has to be permanent. And the thing is when you're doing stamps on drop cloth or any material really, but especially on drop cloth because it's so absorbent and it's, um, it's, it's not a tight weave, you have to really juice up your stamp and allow it time to soak in. Um, if you don't do that, then what will happen is um, you won't get a very good impression. And you're not going to get a perfect impression, and that's what you want. Um, the drop cloth is going to, you know, it's going to look a little muddled and faded um, because, it, you know, it doesn't stamp like it would on paper. And you, I want that look, so that's what I was look going for. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a little vintage photo on there because I want it to look a little bit more old and, um, you know, I don't know. That's just how I want it to look. If you don't like this part, you could definitely skip it, but I like it to look old. And now I'm going to just take my hot glue gun and I'm going to put glue all over the back of the, um, the, uh, Thing. You could use a different glue. You could use like a tacky glue or something um, if you didn't want to use a glue gun. Um, that would probably work just as well. So anyway, I'm just using my hot glue and then I'm going to go ahead and smush it down really good with my fingers and get it in all the cracks and crevices and make sure it's kind of in there. And then I'm going to take the same top coat I've been using and I'm going to take it and use it to um, go over the top of it and that's where the bleed through comes through on this guys but I actually think in the end I actually makes it I think it looks even better um, 
because that's probably what would naturally happen if you had this basket basket for a long time. It would get wet at some point, and it would, you know. So anyway, um, I put the sealer on. It makes it stiff, and I like it. Um, this is another basket that I have, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of do the same thing to it. I found another one of the crockery stamps, and I'm going to go ahead and take it and um, stamp it on some more drop cloth and cut out my piece that I need. Get it to the approximate size before I stamp it. Um, I'll, I'll end up distressing it, you know, again, like I did the other one. But I just want to make sure I get it to kind of the size that I want it um, to see how it fits on the basket. And um, I pull the stamp up and everything, and I got it to the size that I want. And again, I'm going to go ahead and stamp with my archival ink. You have to use some sort of um, permanent ink. Um, because you don't want it to run. If this these items get wet or anything, um, you want it to be permanent. So now I'm just stamping it. And again, you want to always make sure your stamp is super, super juiced up with um, ink because your material, especially something like drop cloth, is going to take a while. And you do need to let it sit on the material for a lot longer than you would paper. And make sure you go over it. And I always try and hold the stamp down as I'm doing this. And try not to move the stamp because that's what caused the blurring like I did on the back of that other piece. But And, and you're not going to get a perfect image um, because it is drop cloth. And that's kind of the idea. So I've already kind of distressed it and everything. And I'm going to take my glue gun and do basically the same thing. Again, you could use... Um, any other kind of glue that you wanted to but I think for my purposes this will work and I'm going to go ahead and do that um, and just kind of smush it all in there and again I'm going to go over this with my sealer um, you, you could leave it as is but I think it looks great done even with the little bleed through on the other one and then here's my finished products guys I think they all turned out amazing. Look at that. Look at that. Looks like authentic chipping, doesn't it? And I don't even know which one I like the best. I really don't. I kind of I kind of like this um little uh thing cuz I had this little caddy because I've had it for so long and it was so ugly and it just turned out so cute front and back. I think it looks amazing. And see how the sides distress just really, really make it look cool. And I even did the inside of the stars um, and jazz those up. And then I think the baskets look great, even the bleed through on that. To me, it looks super vintage. And so now I've got some great little caddies and little things to put in my craft room. Anyway, the file, the little thing worked. Look how cute that looks with the transfer. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you like this. I know it's a lot of a different video, but this is what I'm doing now, and I thought that you would just uh, maybe like to see what I did. Isn't that cute? That little box is so cute. Um, and there's the back, nice and close. So I'll see you again next time, and I've actually got another little video on doing these little things. Um, um, with some Dollar Tree stuff, and I'm going to post that. And I've also got some other uh, video out there coming soon. Bye-bye.